haunted hiking trails, creepy old graveyards, abandoned ghost towns, and old buildings where spirits lurk. Come and explore some of these most haunted places where people just like you and me come face to face with ghosts. This is folklorist and author Jeanette Quackenbush with Backroads Books by 21 Crows. I discover and research old ghost stories, folklore, and legends, then pass them on to you. I have found a whole bunch of these haunted locations of legends and folklore. Now let me help you find your scary place where our natural world and their supernatural world collide. There was once a quiet little town between Logan and South Bloomingville, Ohio, called Cedar Grove. It was settled near a sandstone gorge with a meandering creek called Cedar Creek that ran beneath the cliffs. Many years ago, two young boys who lived in the town were exploring the valley in its many nooks and crannies one afternoon. Growing bored after climbing one boulder after another, they built a small fire within a large recess cave that overlooked a valley of hemlocks and craggy rocks. One of the boys, the younger of the two, was uncertain about visiting this particular cave. It was rumored to be haunted. Some had heard the low baying of a dog at night there, but when they searched for the dog, it could never be found. The boys had only been inside the cave a few minutes when the crunch of footsteps on leaves and sand forced them to look up from the flames. An old man and a large white dog, staying close to the man's side, walked past them. The man had a long gray beard, old-fashioned clothing, and leather moccasins. He carried an antique rifle over his shoulder. The man appeared to be interested in the back of the cave. He paced back and forth near the edge of the far rocks, and upon coming to a standstill, peered intently at a shallow depression in the sandstone earth. Then both vanished into the depression as if they had not been there at all. Eagerly, the boys sought help from some local adults at Cedar Grove in investigating the place the old man had disappeared. With Maddox and shovels, a small crew of men removed the rocks and dug out the hollow in the cave sandstone floor. They exposed two sets of bone, a man and a dog. An old flintlock rifle with the date of 1702 etched into it and some cooking pots. There was also a scratching in the stone that stated the man's name and the date of his death as 1777. For quite some time, many travelers would come to visit to see the remains inside the cave they dubbed Old Man's Cave or Dead Man's Cave. They would stare down at them and wonder who the man and the dog had once been. Some would hear the baying of a hound dog far away, and rumors prevailed that the ghostly dog returned but for what reason, they did not know. After a while, the bones disappeared. The curious stopped coming, and the story faded away, except for a few old timers living in the community who brought it up once in a while when lingering outside the grocery store. One late autumn night, not too far in the past, a park ranger listened intently to the sound of a dog howling deep in the gorge. Occasionally, dogs from the scattering of homes nearby strayed from their backyards. They usually found their way home, but this particular dog sounded like a hunting hound, and the frantic bay most certainly meant it had treed a raccoon. It could mean that poachers were hunting in the park. The ranger snatched up his flashlight and worked his way down the rugged trail and into the gorge. He followed the sound of the dog, filtering out the splash of a waterfall and the crunch of sandstone at his feet. But even while he got closer to the dog's yowling howls and threw the beam of his flashlight upward, he could see little in the fog flowing up from the rock cliff. He saw nothing but darkness and a rock wall. And yet, the howls got louder and louder until they seemed to be circling him just out of reach. He whipped out his flashlight around in a circle, then just as suddenly as the dog's baying came, it ceased. For years, many have heard the baying of a phantom dog within the gorge and cave area called Old Man's Cave. Its presence is explained as this. Before the settling of the towns of Logan and Cedar Grove, some trappers lived along Cedar Creek, the stream that worked its way through the sandstone gorge. These men made their home in modest one-room cabins or animal skin tents abutting the small caves within the gorge. They made a living selling the pelts of the many fur-bearing creatures like otter and fox that roamed the region at the time. As their jobs required them to travel far into the wilderness, they were gone for many days at a time. One winter, upon returning from a seasonal hunt, 
neighbors noticed that one particular trapper named Retzler, who made his home in a cave outcropping, along with his dog Harper, had not been seen in quite some time. The usually heavily traveled path to his abode was overgrown, and there was no sign of his faithful hound who bayed whenever someone neared the camp. After taking the footpath that led to the cave, they lifted the flap of his leather hide tent and peered inside. Before them lay the dead trapper along with his hound dog dead by his side. They carefully lifted the limp bodies of the man and dog and placed them in a shallow hole that had been dug in the back of the cave and covered them with sand. 